Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified. Here we take up important news articles and discuss them in detail as per the demands of UPSC examination. Topics for today's discussion are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. The first topic of today's session is based on the news articles which appeared on page number 15 of the Hindu. The article mentions throughout the ongoing monsoon session of parliament approximately 12 bills have been approved by Rajya Sabha without input or participation from opposition which chose to boycott the proceedings in light of Manipur crisis. The functioning of parliament becomes important part of GS paper 2 syllabus. In the year 2020 prelims, question appeared on similar lines. Here three statements are given and you have to pick the correct statements. You can give your answer in the comment section. In mains 2019 and 2013, question appeared on the issues related to functioning of the parliament. The first question says individual parliamentarian's role as national lawmaker is on a decline which in turn has adversely impacted the quality of debates and their outcomes. The second question relates to the role of individual MPs has diminished over the years and as a result healthy constructive debates on policy issues are not usually witnessed. Now let us see the basic concepts related to legislative functions of the parliament and the executive functions of the parliament. Indian constitution has established a bicameral parliament that comprises of president, council of states that is Rajya Sabha and the house of the people that is Lok Sabha. The provisions mentioned from article 79 to 122 in part 5 of the constitution relates to structure composition officials procedures privileges and authority of the parliament now let us discuss some of the legislative functions of parliament the parliament has been given exclusive jurisdiction to enact laws concerning the subjects outlined in the union list with regard to the concurrent list parliament holds superior authority which implies that in cases of discord between laws of parliament and those of the state legislatures the laws of parliament would prevail during the periods of emergency or president's rule as mentioned in article 356 parliament is empowered to legislate on matters listed in state list as per article 249 of the constitution the parliament can enact laws pertaining to subjects mentioned in the state list if rajya sabha passes a resolution with two thirds majority of members present and voting deeming it necessary in national interest the parliament is also empowered to legislate on items within the state list if it is essential for fulfilling the international agreements or treaties with the foreign nations as per article 253 of the constitution also according to article 252 of the constitution if the legislatures of two or more states pass a resolution indicating desirability of parliamentary legislation on a subject mentioned in the state list the parliament can enact laws for those states the parliament is also empowered to confer the executive with authority to establish specific rules and regulations within the framework of overarching legislation it is known as delegated legislation or subordinate legislation such regulations and laws framed by the executive are presented to parliament for scrutiny now let us see the executive functions and the financial functions of parliament the parliament can exercise influence over the executive with mechanisms like question hour calling attention motion no confidence motion and censor motion the cabinet that is executive can be removed from power by way of a no confidence motion in parliament if it is passed adjournment motion which is specifically applicable to lok sabha serves the crucial purpose of focusing the parliament's attention on pressing matters of public importance also the parliament establishes a committee on ministerial assurances which is tasked with examining whether the promises made by ministers to the parliament have been fulfilled with regard to the financial functions the parliament holds ultimate authority acting as the conclusive decision maker the executive is prohibited from imposing or collecting taxes as well as making acquisitions unless granted the consent and authorization of the parliament also the budget passes through the parliament gives legal validity upon the government's projected revenue and expenditures for the forthcoming fiscal year the legislative oversight 
can be studied under the budgetary oversight and the post budgetary oversight under the budgetary oversight the supervision is done prior to fund allocation and in the post budgetary oversight the regulation is subsequent to the allocation of grants by three financial committees those are committee on public undertakings the estimates committee and the public accounts committee with the legislative and executive functions the significance of parliament can be understood the parliament is an avenue for various groups with distinct ethnic racial linguistic and ideological identities in a country as large as india the debates and discussions contribute to well informed decision making within the parliament the deliberations provide a platform for mps to express their viewpoints and concerns thus contributing to policy formulation it also enables the parliamentarians to vocalize the interest of their respective constituencies the functioning of the parliament is also important for bringing accountability in the governance process as the executive is answerable to the legislative body the members of parliament can question propose resolutions and engage in discussions on matters of public interest to exert pressure on the government it is also important to check on the autocratic tendencies as the power is distributed among a council of ministers rather than concentrating it in a single individual with the ability of parliament to pass a no confidence motion against the cabinet however in recent times there has been a noticeable decline in the effectiveness of parliament's operations as there has been inadequate level of deliberations within the legislative assemblies concerning the numerous laws prior to their enactment and this decline has resulted in gaps and ambiguity within the framework of law making let us see certain issues pertaining to functioning of the parliament as per the prs legislative report the parliament has been sitting for lesser days and passing the fewer bills of all the lok sabhas that had a five year term maximum number of bills were passed during the 8th lok sabha and the least during the 15th lok sabha that is 192 also there has been recent trend of frequent adjournment of the parliamentary sessions as can be seen from the fact that for the last 10 years the rajya sabha has functioned less than 25% of its scheduled time another issue is the marginalization of the parliamentary committees the parliamentary standing committees were created in 1993 to assist the parliament in its legislative and financial business however according to prs legislative research the percentage of bills referred to departmentally related standing committees has decreased as from the graph you can see in the 17th lok sabha this percentage has reached to 17% whereas in 15th lok sabha it was 71% Also there has been decline in the discussion on budget in Lok Sabha since 1952 there has been four instances where budget has been passed without discussing the ministry wise allocations the another concern relates to fewer trust votes in recent years after 11th Lok Sabha the first no confidence motion was moved in 1963 and till date 39 trust votes have been moved in Lok Sabha of these There have been five instances in the year 1979, 1990, 96, 97, 1997, 1998, where the prime minister was not able to prove majority on the floor of the house. Also, the adjournment motions are moved to draw attention of house to a recent matter of urgent public importance. However, the number of such motions has decreased after fifth Lok Sabha. For example, in the 17th Lok Sabha. no adjournment motion have been taken up so far other issues relating to functioning of the parliament relates to resort to money bill route the several key pieces of legislation have been passed as money bills despite the fact they did not fit this category a money bill is defined in article 110 of the constitution there are limited criteria for a bill to be classified as a money bill Now let us move on to see the implications of reduced parliament's functions with a decrease in deliberation and minimal intervention from the parliamentary committees the opposition's capacity to hold the government accountable for its performance also diminishes furthermore the incorporation of 
tenth schedule through the fifty second constitutional amendment act of nineteen eighty five has diluted the individual agency of members of parliament as decisions made by the party whip hold precedence over the representation of a constituency by its respective mp also a significant portion of the bills presented in parliament is ratified through voice voting which stands in contrast to the more reliable division voting the division voting method is capable of recording response of each member including instances of abstention moving on let us see some of the measures to enhance the productivity of parliament the absence of intellectuals and legal experts in the assembly prompts a call for legal community and lawyers to extend their involvement beyond their professional sphere thus reducing the ambiguity in laws the government has the ability to modify rules of procedure of both houses of parliament as per article 118 of the constitution this can bring mandatory reference of bill to parliamentary committees and establishment of appropriate measures against disorderly conduct by the members also there is need to reevaluate the anti defection law the application of whip could be limited to motions of no confidence only there is also need to follow the recommendations of national commission to review the working of constitution which has recommended that rather than presiding officer the decision to disqualify a member should be made by president in case of mps or governor in case of mlas on advice of election commission of india the government can also introduce the concept of legislative impact assessment where each legislative proposal could encompass a comprehensive evaluation of its social environmental and administrative implications thus promoting broader awareness and subsequent legal evaluation there is also need to fortify the role of opposition which can be done by following the system of shadow cabinet which is a system in britain this would enhance the opposition's capacity to scrutinize and provide alternative view points on the government actions with this we will be concluding our first topic the second topic of today's session is based on the news article which appeared on page number 18 of the hindu the topic relates to fiscal responsibility budget management act and medium term expenditure framework statement the ministry of finance has conveyed its inability to release medium term expenditure framework which is mandated by fiscal responsibility budget management act the medium term expenditure framework requires assumptions to be made about growth rate of the economy and revenue receipts to enable meaningful expenditure projections and rolling targets for the next 2 years however due to unprecedented global uncertainties that may adversely affect the medium term projections the government is not placing fiscal projections for 2024 25 and 2025 and 2026 in the parliament the topic forms an important part of general studies three syllabus coming under government budgeting also in 2018 question appeared directly on the topic you can give the answer in the comment section in 2013 a mains question appeared which states what are the reasons for introduction of fiscal responsibility and budget management act discuss critically its salient features and their effectiveness in the scope of today's discussion we will first take a look at the frbm act before going into detail what is the medium term expenditure framework statement so let us first discuss why the frbm act was brought the indian economy faced a problem of large fiscal deficit and its monetization spilled over to the external sector in late 1980s and early 1990s the large borrowings of the government led to a situation where the government was unable to pay even for the two weeks of imports which resulted in economic crisis of 1991 consequently economic reforms were introduced in 1991 and the fiscal consolidation emerged as one of the key areas of reforms however after a good start in the early 1990s the fiscal consolidation faltered after 
1997 and 1998 and hence the fiscal deficit started rising after 1997 and 1998 therefore the government had to introduce frbm act of 2003 to check deteriorating fiscal situation now let us discuss certain points about fiscal responsibility and budget management act of 2003 fiscal deficit is defined as excess of total expenditure over total receipts excluding the borrowings this can be understood with an example the government earns rupees 100 in a particular year however it has to spend rupees 120 hence the government needs to borrow rupees 20 from somewhere so in simpler terms rupees 20 is the fiscal deficit the frbm act was introduced to provide legal institutional framework for the fiscal consolidation it has made mandatory for the central government to take measures to reduce fiscal deficit to eliminate revenue deficit and to generate revenue surplus the act binds not only the present government but also the future governments to adhere to the path of fiscal consolidation the government is allowed to move away from the path of fiscal consolidation in certain cases only for example natural calamity national security and other exceptional grounds which the central government may specify hence the frbm act provides reduction of deficit of the government to sustainable levels over a medium term so as to ensure intergenerational equity in fiscal management and long term macroeconomic stability moving on let us see fiscal management principles the central government is required to take appropriate measures to limit the fiscal deficit up to 3% of the gross domestic product the act also endeavors to ensure that the general government debt does not exceed 60% of the gdp the central government debt does not exceed 40% of the gdp by the end of financial year 2024 and 2025 also the central government shall not give additional guarantees with respect to any loan on security of consolidated fund of india in excess of 0.5% of gdp in any financial year the government may exceed annual fiscal deficit target on grounds of national security act of war national calamity collapse of agriculture which severely affects the farm output and incomes structural reforms in the economy with unanticipated fiscal implications decline in the real output growth of a quarter by at least 3% below its average of previous four quarters however any deviation from the fiscal deficit target shall not exceed 0.5% of the gdp in a year now let us see the statements to be submitted under the frbm act the act has required the government to lay before parliament three policy statements in each financial year namely the medium term fiscal policy statement the fiscal policy strategy statement and macroeconomic framework policy statement through the finance act 2002 amendments were introduced to the fiscal responsibility and budget management act of 2003 and it was decided that in addition to the existing three documents the central government shall lay another document that is the medium term expenditure framework statement before both the houses of parliament immediately following the session of parliament in which first three documents are laid while the medium term fiscal policy statement lays down the fiscal constraints of the government in the medium term the medium term expenditure framework lays down the expenditure commitments for various sectors over a 3 years rolling framework now let us understand what is medium term expenditure framework statement as mentioned in news it is a statement presented to the parliament under section 3 of the frbm act 2003 the objective of medium term expenditure framework statement is a closer integration between budget and frbm statements it is presented separately in the session next to session in which union budget is presented normally in monsoon session 
द स्टेटमेंट इज वर्टिकल एक्सपांशन ऑफ द एग्रीगेट्स ऑफ द एक्सपेंडिचर प्रोजेक्शंस इन द फिजिकल फ्रेमवर्क प्रेजेंटेड अलॉन्ग विथ एनुअल फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स एंड डिमांड फॉर ग्रांट्स द स्टेटमेंट सेट्स अ थ्री ईयर रोलिंग टारगेट फॉर एक्सपेंडिचर इंडिकेटर्स विथ स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ अंडरलाइंग एजम्पन्स एंड रिस्क इन्वॉल्व द फ्रेमवर्क स्टेटमेंट कंटेन्स द एक्सपेंडिचर कमिटमेंट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑन मेजर पॉलिसी चेंजेस इंक्लूडिंग न्यू सर्विसेस न्यू स्कीम्स एंड द प्रोग्राम्स इट ऑल्सो कंटेन्स एक्सप्लिसिट कंटीजेंट लियाबिलिटीज विच आर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ स्टूपुलेटेड एंड विटी पेमेंट्स ओवर अ मल्टी ईयर ट्राइम फ्रेम लास्टली इट ऑल्सो कंटेन्स डिटेल ब्रेकअप ऑफ द ग्रांट्स फॉर क्रिएशन ऑफ capital assets the statement provides an estimate of expenditure commitments of various items such as education health rural development energy subsidies pension etc with this we will be concluding our second topic the last article of today's session is based on general studies paper 2 syllabus indian constitution and significant provisions the provision we are going to talk about is fifth schedule of the constitution The news article appeared on page number eleven of the Hindu. It talks about Anakapalli district of Andhra Pradesh, where villages which are predominantly inhabited by tribals are backward and qualified to be notified under the fifth schedule. Hence, there are demands raised to notify these areas as a schedule area. We will be discussing some basic provisions related to the fifth schedule, the articles related to fifth schedule, the functions of tribal advisory council and role of governor in relation to fifth schedule in 2013 question appeared on the similar lines you can mention your answer in the comment section also in 2013 question was asked article 244 of indian constitution relates to administration of scheduled areas and tribal areas analyze the impact of non implementation of provisions of fifth schedule on growth of the left wing extremism Article two forty four clause one states that provisions of fifth schedule shall apply to administration and control of scheduled area and the scheduled tribes in any state other than states of Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram, and Tripura. These four states come under sixth schedule of the constitution. The purpose of the fifth schedule is to preserve tribal autonomy their culture economic empowerment and to ensure social economic political justice and preservation of peace and good governance the fifth schedule has been designed in furtherance of articles 15 clause 4 and article 46 of the constitution to protect tribals from social injustice and exploitation hence it becomes states constitutional duty to take positive and stern measures for survival and preservation of integrity and dignity of the tribals next let us discuss the criteria for declaring an area as a scheduled area the first scheduled areas and scheduled tribes commission dibar commission 1960 laid down following criteria for declaring any area as a scheduled area under fifth schedule of the constitution the criteria are the preponderance of tribal population which shall not be less than 50% the compactness and reasonable size of the area underdeveloped nature of the area marked disparity in economic standard of people as compared to neighboring areas a viable administrative entity such as a district block or taluka has also been identified as an important additional criterion as per ministry of tribal affairs These criteria are not spelled out in the Constitution of India but have become well established. These criteria embody principles followed in declaring excluded and partially excluded areas under Government of India Act 1935 as well as those contained in Schedule B of Recommendations of Excluded and Partially Excluded Area Subcommittee of the Constituent Assembly. Next let us see the provisions related to tribes advisory council to further the objectives of fifth schedule tribes advisory councils have been constituted in 10 states 
दी स्टेट्स आर आंध्र प्रदेश तेलंगाना छत्तीसगढ़ गुजरात हिमाचल प्रदेश झारखंड मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र ओडिशा एंड राजस्थान द ट्राइब्स एडवाइजरी काउंसिल कैन ऑल्सो बी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड इन अदर स्टेट्स विच हैव लार्ज ट्राइबल पॉपुलेशन इफ प्रेसिडेंट डिरेक्ट्स द ट्राइब्स एडवाइजरी काउंसिल शेल कंसिस्ट ऑफ नॉट मोर देन ट्वेंटी मेम्बर्स एंड थ्री फोर्थ ऑफ दीज मेम्बर्स शेल बी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ स्केड्यूल ट्राइब्स इन स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली द फंक्शन ऑफ ट्राइबल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल इज टू एडवाइज टू गवर्नर ऑन मैटर्स रिलेटिंग टू वेलफेयर एंड एडवांसमेंट ऑफ स्केड्यूल ट्राइब्स इन द स्टेट सच एडवाइस टेंडर टू गवर्नर इज नॉट बाइंडिंग इट इज कंपल्सरी फॉर द गवर्नर टू कंसल्ट दी ट्राइब्स एडवाइजरी काउंसिल बिफोर मेकिंग एनी रेगुलेशन रिलेटिंग टू गवर्नेंस इन स्केड्यूल एरियाज फॉर एग्जाम्पल लैंड एलिनेशन और लैंड ट्रांसफर अगेन द प्रोविजन रिक्वायर्स कंसल्टेशन एंड नॉट कंसेंट ऑफ ट्राइब्स एडवाइजरी काउंसिल द लास्ट पार्ट वी विल डिस्कस इज द रोल ऑफ गवर्नर रिलेटिंग टू फिफ्थ स्केड्यूल द गवर्नर ऑफ ईच स्टेट हैविंग स्केड्यूल एरियाज फर्निशेज अ रिपोर्ट टू प्रेसिडेंट एनुअली और वेन एवर नीडेड रिगार्डिंग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द स्केड्यूल एरियाज द एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर ऑफ यूनियन शेल एक्सटेंड टू गिविंग ऑफ डिरेक्शन टू स्टेट एज टू द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ सच एरियाज द गवर्नर हैज रूल मेकिंग पावर्स रिलेटिंग टू नंबर ऑफ मेम्बर्स मोड ऑफ अपॉइंटमेंट एंड फंक्शनिंग ऑफ ट्राइब्स एडवाइजरी काउंसिल एज डिस्कस्ड अब ट्राइब्स एडवाइजरी काउंसिल रेंडस एडवाइज टू द गवर्नर रिगार्डिंग वेलफेयर एंड एडवांसमेंट ऑफ स्केड्यूल ट्राइब्स इन स्टेट वेन आस्ट The governor can also restrict application of any central or state legislation to schedule areas either completely or partially subject to exceptions and modifications as notified. The governor also makes regulations for the peace and good government of schedule areas. These regulations relate to prohibit or restrict transfer of land to members of scheduled tribes in such areas regulate allotment of land to members of scheduled tribes and regulate carrying on business as money lenders by persons who lend money to members of scheduled tribes in such areas to carry out above regulations the governor may repeal or amend any central or state law or any existing law applicable to scheduled area for this prior consultation of tribes advisory council and assent of president is necessary for regulations to be brought into force with this we will be concluding today's session